My sister got married last weekend. I flew into town and my parents insisted that I stay with them instead of in a hotel as I wanted. My parents are consistently late for everything. It's a Latin thing, but I hate being late. I think it's disrespectful. The wedding was at 2.30. My folks live about half an hour from the church. Noon rolls up and my folks still need to get ready. They're adults and I'm over-dealing with them. I get ready, I send for an Uber, and I'm at the church at 2 o'clock. I check in with my sister. She asked if I had any problems getting my parents to the church. I told her that I had to come by myself. She goes white and said that I was responsible for getting them there on time. Well, nobody asked me to do that. I didn't even want to stay there. So now everyone has started calling my parents. They're getting ready. They were about 35 minutes late. The service was shortened because there was another wedding later that day. Everyone is still mad at me for not getting my parents there on time. My aunt said that I was an idiot for messing up the timing of the wedding. My mom says it's my fault for not reminding them to get ready. Am I the only one who thinks adults should be able to be on time for their own kid's wedding without help? Not the idiot. If they need to be reminded to get ready on their daughter's wedding day, they need a living caretaker. Unless you were specifically asked to get them to the church, that's not your job. If your sister truly thinks you messed up the wedding by being on time, it's a good time for some space between you and your family. Your mother needs reminders to get ready for her own daughter's wedding. Wow, no wonder you wanted to stay in a hotel. These entire dynamics are so frustrating. I really want OP to tell the parents, I'm so worried about you since you weren't able to get ready for your sister's wedding on time by yourself. I know you would never be late for such an important day, so I think we should schedule a visit with your doctor to make sure you're doing okay. Blink, blink. And your sister couldn't have asked you beforehand to ride herd on your parents and get them to the church on time. I'm guessing everyone's blaming you because you're the comfortable, stress-free option. People know that you're not going to blow up, start a screaming match outside their house, and then send in the flying monkeys. Am I right? This sounds like a classic missing stare situation where nobody wants to yell at the problem person directly because that person will never change. So they instead scream at everyone else for not managing around the problem person. You know now in the future to never stay with your parents or be put in a position where you could be seen as responsible for them. This is the kind of thing that's easy to say on the internet and less realistic to do in real life, but I wish your sister had just started the wedding on time and locked your parents' lazy butts out of the church. I'm going against the grain and saying everyone's the idiot here. Your sister and parents suck for all the reasons everyone else is talking about, but you suck too for making a principal point on your sister's wedding day. This is your family. You knew how your parents would be. You said if you'd been told you were responsible for them, you'd have prodded them, which is fair, but you knew they were going to be late and you just let it happen. Your sister's wedding isn't the time to make this stand. The kind thing to have done is herded your parents to the wedding as if it was an implicit request from your family and then make it clear later that you didn't like that role and don't plan on ever doing it again. Yeah, it's not OP's responsibility, but I can't imagine being in a hotel with someone else going to the same wedding I am and instead of trying to motivate them to get ready to leave on time, just walking away entirely. Kind of an idiot move just for the principal, especially when it's your sister and her parents. I feel bad for OP's sister. It's tough to find out your immediate family doesn't care about you on your wedding day. I, 25 male, am engaged to my amazing fiancée Jessie, 24 female. We met six years ago in college and our relationship started off as friends, turned into more and we got engaged three months ago. I've known her parents and siblings for four years now and have grown to like them, especially in the last year when we spent more time together. Some background on me that they learned over this period. My dad died when I was five months old after an accident at work. When I was 12, my mom died suddenly and I spent the remainder of my childhood in foster care because my only living family, my dad's parents, both had Alzheimer's and were in a nursing home together. Back to the main topic. Jessie and I got engaged, and the first thing her family wanted to do was throw us an engagement party. In the lead-up to this, I met a few more extended family members who all seemed nice. Then the engagement party happened, and things took a major turn. My name became such a big topic of conversation. So I hear them talk about how silly it is for a grown man to be named Bowie and surely my real name is Bowen and Bowie is just a nickname and how crazy and cruel were my parents to saddle a man with a juvenile name like Bowie. 
Then one of Jessie's aunts asked me if I would be using a different, more mature and masculine name in our marriage. And I said, of course not, because it wouldn't be my name. Then I got a bunch of questions from that aunt, as well as Jessie's parents, and two of her uncles about my thoughts on the name, etc., and whether it was a good idea to use such a name as a married man, then asking if I didn't feel strange about a name my parents probably picked as a cute name for a baby but not a grown man. That's when I said they'd need to head to the grave and ask my parents, seeing as I couldn't speak for their thought process, and how it might not be easy to get an answer with them being in the ground for 25 and 12 years respectively, but I'm sure my dead parents would love to hear their criticisms of my name. Jessie was at my side the entire time, and she was mad at her family, but I told her to be calm and that I could handle it. So I said all this to them, and I was cheerful, and then I continued on as if nothing had happened. But Jessie's family were very uncomfortable with how I addressed them, but I played dumb and acted as if nothing had happened. After the party, they told Jessie I'd been so rude as to make them uncomfortable. She told them they had been judgmental idiots. I told her parents that I hoped they would understand why they were inappropriate with their comments and questions and gave them a chance to let it go. They said I was rude and I clearly enjoyed it when I played dumb as I did and I should apologize for making them uncomfortable. Jessie told them the bad place would be freezing over before I apologized for it. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Well played, OP. You took an extremely upsetting and insensitive situation brought on by your future in-law's family and serve them each a full helping of crow to chow down on. I applaud your efforts. Well done indeed. No apology is necessary from you. Exactly. The in-laws are simply upset because they didn't get the reaction they wanted from their bullying. The audacity to suggest someone should change their first name. And they weren't even suggesting. They were shaming and disrespecting him and his parents, while basically telling him this was what he needed to do. OP handled it brilliantly and good on the fiancé for firmly being on his side. Yep, they weren't uncomfortable because your parents had passed, they were uncomfortable because they couldn't get a rise out of you or manipulate you by preying on your self-esteem. They weren't used to it and didn't know what to do, so when they couldn't upset you over the name, they tried to upset you by telling you your reaction wasn't appropriate. They're searching for an insecurity to exploit, possibly unconsciously, so they have the upper hand. They're probably not bad people, they just want to have a button they can press when they feel their power slipping. Jessie sounds like a gem, and I'm so glad she stood up for you. I'm sorry her family sucks. I'm an 18-year-old female, and this is my last Christmas at home. I'm a senior in high school and plan to go to college next year. My parents divorced when I was 11. I live with my mom and see my dad whenever I want to. My dad remarried a few years ago, and he and his new wife have a baby that's a few months old. My mom is single. Since this is my last Christmas at home, I've asked my parents if we can do Christmas the way we did it when I was a child, for nostalgia's sake. I'd like for my dad to come spend Christmas Eve with me, he can stay the night on the couch or air mattress. He and mom wake me up in the morning by singing carols and bringing me breakfast in bed, then we spend all morning opening gifts, taking pictures, drinking cocoa, laughing and being a family. Then my dad makes brunch, my mom and I make cookies together, and after we visit my aunt and cousins on my mom's side, where there are more gifts, pictures, cocoa and laughing, plus we play silly games all afternoon. Finally, my dad cooks dinner for everyone, and we watch Christmas movies, play charades, then chill out until bedtime, when my parents would tuck me in and stay beside me until I fell asleep. My mom said yes, we could do this, and she thinks it's a great idea to do since it's my last Christmas at home. When I asked my dad, he said he wasn't sure because it's not fair to his wife and he doesn't want to miss the baby's first Christmas. My dad asked if he could invite his wife and baby. Mom and I said no because they're not part of this. He asked if I'd be willing to split the day between mom and him, but I don't want to do that. Dad offered to come over to make breakfast and do the morning stuff and stay through brunch, but that's only part of the day. I kept trying to explain to my dad how important this last Christmas was to me to spend it with him and mom, just us, doing it the way we did when I was little. My dad said he couldn't promise me the whole day and not spend any time with his wife, baby and his side of the family. He kept asking me to split the day and I kept saying no. This was the only way I wanted Christmas to go this year. So now my dad and I aren't speaking and the last I heard from him was a text saying he's mailing me my gifts and to contact him when I can be reasonable because my request is selfish and unrealistic. Am I the idiot? Oh dear me. I really want you to hear me out here. I understand why this is important to you, but I need you to really think about what you're asking for and why. 
And I also really need to think about why your dad has refused when your mom hasn't. You have invested so much emotionally in this idea. In the process, you've convinced yourself that you should be more important and special than your stepmom and brother. Your dad has offered you a compromise, but you are so invested in what you want you aren't considering anything else. I'm sorry, but you don't get to do that. And you don't get to compare your mom and dad here either. If you still want to have a dad at the end of all this, you have to move on. Yes, you are the idiot. Sweetie, unfortunately, you can't go back in time. Your dad did everything to work with you. What you asked for? It was not only inappropriate, but also very selfish. He has not one baby, he has two. He tried to work with you and be there for his wife and new baby. His wife was even willing to work with you, which not many would. Be thankful you're surrounded by people who love you and don't ruin this Christmas by living in the past. He can stay the night on the couch or air mattress. This is where OP 100% lost me. OP is 18, not a child. She should be able to recognize how exceptionally inappropriate this is. So, OP demands that her dad ditch his wife and infant to sleep at his ex-wife's house so that she can pretend to be a little kid again. OP, you may be young, but not that young. This is delusional and selfish behavior. Good on the dad for having a backbone. He gave very reasonable compromises, and OP wasn't being reasonable or living in reality. I, 30 female, have been friends with Mary, 27 female, for roughly five years. We're completely different people who met at work and became close friends. Three years into our friendship, Mary started becoming sick. No one really knew what was going on, but it all escalated into her passing out at work and needing an ambulance to get to a hospital. I could sense she was scared because she didn't know what was wrong with her. I took it extremely seriously and stood by her side through it all. Whenever she texted or called me because of her medical emergency, aka her being scared to collapse or faint randomly, I'd immediately answer and go see her. I spent many days by her side and often spent all day accompanying her until her husband or a direct family member took over. This all continued for roughly a year until she was finally diagnosed with severe anxiety and a panic disorder. She did get it treated through therapy and returned to a new normal, being able to do things alone again. In the meantime, my life had changed drastically. I found a new job, met my now husband, and we moved into our own place. Naturally, we haven't seen each other or spoken much during this time because I was so busy. Anyway, I found out that Mary's condition had worsened recently when she called me in the middle of the night, asking me to accompany her until her husband returned from work. I did go to see her, and upon asking why her therapy was no longer helping, she claimed she quit therapy because she wanted to get through it on her own. I asked her if her family knew, but she said she didn't want to worry them, so they didn't know. Her husband knows. Well, her calls became more frequent again, but this time it was hard for me just to leave everything and be there for her. At first, I was there for her again, but this time, I just didn't have the energy to do so anymore. Her requests became irrational and more demanding, and while I have sympathy for her and her condition, I see no point in putting up with it if she is refusing proper medical help, let alone help from her immediate family. So, I started making up excuses why I couldn't help her at certain times. It all boiled down to last Thursday when I got a message from her at 4am asking me to take her to her parents' place because she had a medical emergency. I saw the message, but I ignored it because I just couldn't take it anymore so I ghosted her and went back to sleep. The next day, I pretended to have slept through her text and found out that she'd managed to stay home until her husband got there, but she didn't fail to make me feel bad for ignoring her messages. She's giving me the cold shoulder since. I know she's mad I didn't answer or help her when she needed me. I do feel guilty, but I thought she could call an ambulance if it was an emergency. So, am I the idiot for ignoring my friend during another of her medical emergencies? Not the idiot. Your friend is using you. Suggest she get a caregiver if she doesn't want to go to therapy. She's clearly not getting through it on her own. You're not an emotional support pet. Right. The fact that Mary expected OP to be awake at 4am and able to come right over tells us that Mary doesn't value OP at all. She doesn't see Mary as a person with her own needs and responsibilities. OP is not a bad friend. Mary is. She's asking you to continue enabling her choice not to seek therapy and more appropriate help. You are allowed to set boundaries, and you should set boundaries on this. To actively give up on a method that worked to improve her is ridiculously stupid. Now she could be lying, 
She claimed she quit therapy because she wanted to get through it on her own, and she might have had to stop due to financial reasons, pressure from her husband or something else. If that's the case, it's a sad situation for her, but you aren't the cause, so you don't owe her any of your time. It sounds like you give up your time when you can, which is lovely, but she's definitely the idiot for guilt-tripping you when you don't give up your time. My husband has a niece teen called Jenny. Everyone in the family adores Jenny. I've never met her dad, but apparently he's an abusive idiot. Jenny basically lives with her aunts and uncles. The family all dote on her. She can do no wrong. Unfortunately, my husband is worse than all of them. We have a toddler son, but my husband seems to love his niece more than our son. It's really frustrating because his family doesn't care about our son's accomplishments as much as Jenny. Like, oh, your son learned how to walk? Well, Jenny could walk when she was one week old. Now the problem. Jenny is supposed to be with us for Christmas. I don't want her here. I want to have a Christmas with my son and husband. I want my son to get all our attention. Jenny's other aunts and uncles are willing to have her on Christmas, so I asked my husband to let her be with them. He got mad at me and said it was our turn and he wanted to have his niece with us. I told him I wanted to have Christmas for our family only and he called me an idiot and said Jenny's family too. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. Your son is a toddler and won't even remember this Christmas. Stop punishing Jenny because her family loves her. It's one Christmas of many to come. She's a teenager and you're an adult. She obviously has a hard time with her parents and her aunts and uncles are trying to make her feel loved by them. Take a long, hard look in the mirror and figure out who's the idiot in this situation because it's weird and smacks of jealousy. Not the idiot. It isn't jealousy if people continually throw the other person in your face. For example, when my daughter was a teenager, she started riding horses. The woman who was teaching her had a niece who was very competitive in the sport. Every time my daughter did or said something, this woman would roll her eyes and say, well, you're not like Tina then. Tina did X, Y, Z. And it got to the point where every mention of Tina just made us want to run the other way. It really was nauseating, and I can see why OP doesn't want that atmosphere for Christmas. Everyone's the idiot here. OP clearly has issues with the fact that Jenny has become the centre of the family's affection because she's effectively an orphan whom they all share the care of. There also seems to be a massive miscommunication between OP and her husband. The husband likely sees Jenny as more of his child than his niece. He's just got a lot of co-parents to work with. OP does not see Jenny as her stepdaughter. That's leading to some mismatched expectations that, in turn, lead to hurt feelings. OP, I think it's time for couples counselling. Everyone's a little bit wrong, but everyone is also a little right, and I'm not sure if the nuances of the situation will be navigated without help.